Yeah, thanks for coming. Uh, appreciate the time. And I think everybody in our program is ready to play a game. We've had uh, four weeks and plus of practices, meetings, and and uh, school hadn't even started yet. School starts tomorrow. So our players have worked really hard. And we've, you know, as coaching the first year is always the toughest as far as knowing exactly what you have, what your concerns are. And, and there's so many questions that we have, a lot of new players. And so we'll get a lot of answers to those questions the first game. And uh, I think more than anything else, we, we want to find out where we're at, you know, as a program, as a team. And, and uh, I don't know if one game tells you everything, but it'll tell you a lot. And, so we're we're ready to go and ready to play a game. Going in, where do you think you're at? Well, I think our guys have worked hard. I think we've done everything we can, uh, you know, from the standpoint of getting our team ready to play a game. But I have done this long enough that know that you know games are different than practices. They're different than scrimmages and. And there'll be some nerves out there, I'm sure, for our players. I want them to be a little nervous. I think you're, you should be excited about we're playing a great opponent we're on national TV. You know, it's been a long time uh, since our guys have played a game. And some of our guys haven't played in a couple years, whether they're transfers or what have you. So, you know, there's, there's certain, a certain excitement uh, building around now. And I think being game week for our guys that, that we're, um, they're anxious to show what, what they can do. So, you know, the fact that it's on national TV is an added bonus. You know, you don't get that very often at the FCS level. So this is, this is a neat, neat time for our program. And I've tried not to, you know, put too many expectations, both on our players and our fan base or anything like that, because, heck, I don't, you know, we don't really know for sure yet. But I've done this long enough to know that our guys have worked, have put the work in to be ready to play a game. And um, I'm just, you know, I would be disappointed if we don't play well and execute well. And, you know, we could play well and do everything right and not win because our opponent's really good. But I think our guys have done the work. Well, there's, there's unknowns there. Uh, Zion Webb has played some, so he, he's got some experience. But he's the only one that's got experience, and he's the only one we had coming back from the spring. Now, Aaron McLaughlin is a transferred in, is a big, talented guy that's worked really hard. Tayshawn Smoot is a true freshman, and we think has a lot of talent and, is, and has really progressed well. So those three are kind of at the forefront of the quarterback spot. Uh, and again, with the only one that have played or any experience is Zion. So we'll get ready. Well, we have all three. We think we're ready to play the game. Um, well, we probably won't name a starter until you know, a minute or 30 seconds before kickoff. And then why? I and mean, even if I know, which I'll know beforehand, why would I tell anybody, right? I mean, you only have one game, one chance to, to kind of do that. And I don't think it makes a big deal. We're going to run what we run no matter who's in there. Uh, but, you know, we'll wait till game time. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I know more now than I did six months ago. Uh, but I know he's done very, very well. He's had great success, as you said, at Division II level. His great success at, at Stephen F. Austin. Uh, he looks like an outstanding football coach. He's got a good staff put together, and he's recruited well. And Texas, is, as everybody knows, is is one of the best states in the country uh, for high school football and for football players. In period, so he's done a nice job. And he wears the cowboy hat too, right? He's got that, you know, that nice cowboy hat that he wears, but. His staff has done a good job, and he's he's always done a good job, uh, even going back as assistant as a defensive coordinator. At the quarterback position, are you confident that by the end of the week you'll have a guy at that, or are you, is it possible that you'll consider playing multiple guys? Oh, we'll consider playing multiple guys. Uh, I always, and it, it sounds like coach speak, but I, it's really true. We told the whole team, and don't worry so, so much about where you're at on the depth chart. Just worry about if you're good enough to win with. And if you're good enough to win with, you'll play. And that is at any position, whether it's quarterback or defensive back or, or center, wherever it is. We want If you're good enough to win with, you'll have an opportunity to play, and you'll play. And I'm a little bit different. Some people say you got to have one quarterback and ride with them. And I've never been that way. I've played two in the past. and, and uh, you know, But they have to be able to run the whole offense with, with whoever quarterback there is. But I think we have more than one that we can win with. I uh, hope we have three. Uh, but I, I would be surprised that we don't play at least two on Saturday. Yeah, there's there's about six oars, in, I mean, on that one. You know, there's 
which I guess you could look at, geez, one guy hasn't really stood out. Uh, there'd be seven if Reggie ben, Reginald Ben hadn't got hurt, you know, true freshman who's really talented, and he's out for the season. Um, but he would be definitely in the mix as well. So there's six guys that we've kind of rotated evenly with reps. And, uh, you know, you could play more one at a time, but, you know, we're not – that rotation is, is a truly or, 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 or. And uh, we'll see how it rolls. But I feel pretty good that there's uh, – you know, at least three of them, maybe four of them will play Saturday. Well, coverage certainly not down this group. You guys got the whole field advantage, certainly, with your coming from Texas. How excited are you for your guys to play in front of probably the majority of Jacksonville State crowd? Yeah, I hope we have a great crowd. I think the weather's going to cooperate. It's, it's, a, it's a really neat venue. I, I actually, this summer, I had, I'd, uh, we had made a trip down south, and so I came back up, and I said, let's stop in and see the stadium. And uh, I didn't tell nobody. The gates were open. I kind of snuck in and walk down on the turf. And uh, it's a neat little, neat venue. I think it'll be a fun place to come watch us play. And I hope uh, all the Jack State fans come down there because it'll, it'll be nice. It would be, would be nice to have a great home field advantage. Um, you, know, I, you still got to play whether, you're, whether you have that advantage or not. But I hope we get a good crowd. Coach, one can imagine that there's butterflies on the court. And I've been here before as a head coach. But mm -hmm. what do you see like, as a feeling that this is all going to be new with this COVID? Yeah, I think the first game, uh, I always hope is a as a, as a coach, you have butterflies. The same way as a player. If you don't, then then maybe you're not as invested as, as uh, you need to be. So uh, there's going to be excitement about it. There'll be some nerves. Uh, I've probably done this long enough that maybe I don't have as much anxiety or nervousness as I did when I was 30 years old. But uh, at the same time, uh, I'm anxious for this program to, to go out there and perform. I'm trying, again, I'm trying to temper everything because we have so many questions and you know, not sure exactly. We have so many, not only new guys, but everything's new to our players. And I, you know, I go back and, you know, the first year and the first game of the first year is always the hardest because it's a whole new system and, and all that stuff. But I'm, I'm excited to watch our guys perform and watch our coaching staff and against a really good opponent. You know, we're open up with somebody that's ranked in the top 10 in, in FCS and got a lot of their players back and have a great program. So it's a good, it's a, it's going to be a good opportunity for us. Pardon me? Well, we uh, Will Osteen. Yeah, he's. I think he's uh, got a tremendous future. He's such a. Sometimes his toughness and his hard edge will get him in trouble because he, you know, he he'll he'll kind of headbutt somebody or kind of. I, I call him Hannibal Lecter because he looks like he wants to bite someone's face off. Um, so, uh, but he's got a great career because football is important to him. He's a tough guy. He's still learning. Coach Trick is doing a good job of teaching him some stuff. I think he'll be able to, throughout his career, he'll play guard and tackle, and uh, he's going to play. He may be starting Saturday. I don't, I'm not, uh, we haven't released a definite depth chart, but we, he's going to play a lot of football for us in his career. Really, really excited for his future. No, there's, I mean, obviously it was something that happened a few years ago. Uh, our school's aware of the situation. The staff is aware. His family's aware. And, and uh, I would just say, don't, let's not rush the judgment. Let's let all the facts get out. And let's, uh, let's let the process go before we, we pass judgment. That'll be my last comments on that. Well, yeah, the, uh, we didn't change anything from the cut. We are red and white, and that's how we're going to be. Uh, we have one helmet, um, you know, kind of a new logo on the side of that. Now, I like our helmet, our, our, our jerseys. Uh, I think when we ordered them, we probably ordered the sizes a little bigger than they need to be. Maybe our guys lost more weight, so we got to tape those in there a little bit tighter. But uh, I thought it was a cl nice, clean look. Um, and uh, we're wearing the way jerseys. We're in white, so it's – I think it's a good look. Our guys, you know, we broke it out for our little practice game uh, last week, and I thought it looked pretty sharp. So it was, it'll be fun. And, and you, want, you want to look good. And more importantly, you want to play good. Uh, um, but our coaches may break out a new – we're going to start a new style of coaches, you know. If it's warm, we're wearing shorts. And people say, why, why are you wearing shorts? And I'm like, why not? You know, if it's 85 degrees and humid, you know, it's like – they, coaches used to wear like coat and ties all the time on sidelines, right? And they kind of changed that, both in football and basketball, right? And then basketball coach also wear coat and tie, and they're like, why? You know? And so I'm never, I'm never one to have to, 
I mean, I'm a little bit of a traditionalist, but I'm also one that's like, just because somebody else always done it, that doesn't mean we got to do it. So if it's 85 degrees, I told the coaches, we're going to be all wearing shorts. And that might have been the – they had the biggest smile and applause in that, and I think since in the last eight months. So, yeah, we're going to break out a new style. I'm not, we're not the only ones, though. I've seen my buddy Pat Fitzgerald Northwestern did that before, and I think even Mel at Michigan State did that. But I don't know if the whole staff did it like we are. We're setting a trend here at Jack State. Check it out. That's a good question. I, I would hope, and, and again, uh, you're going to find out Saturday that at least watch the team and say, boy, these guys really play hard. And they play with passion, play smart, and they play physical. And those are things, irregardless of what scheme you have or how the game is going and all that, those are something that is non-negotiables that should happen all the time. And we've talked about it, talked about it, talked about it, but in the game, we've, we, that's one thing I'm going to – really be looking at post game and the next day. Did we play as hard as we should have played? Did we play smart? Did we play physical? If we did all those three things, then we can live with the results. How important is this opportunity you know, to be on ESPN, especially in a week like this with a smaller slate, in terms of the future of the program, trying to get awareness out to, to players across the country and, and their families about what this program is about? Yeah, I think it's, you know, when you're playing week zero on national TV, uh, you know, you're going to get a lot of eyeballs. Somebody told me the other day that I guess our game last year with UAB in week zero on that win or we at Wednesday, whenever it was, was the high one of the high the highest rated game or something uh, on that week. So it, there's no question, particularly on you know we're in transition, going up, you know, changing levels and moving up the conference and all that. You know, the exposure, any kind of positive exposure, any exposure at all, is going to be good for our program and. And we're cognizant of that. We haven't talked about it a whole lot because I don't want the guys to worry about being on TV. I want them to just worry about playing. But at the same time, it is uh, an opportunity for, for us nationally to get some eyeballs on us for recruits to watch it. And, and then uh, we think going forward uh, next year when we move up to Conference USA, uh, we'll get a whole lot more exposure because we said we'll play on Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, put us on TV, and we'll play there and pay us. You know, give us money too. That always helps. We need some of that. Obviously, you weren't here last year, but they did. You guys did play Stephen F. Austin. How valuable was that tape from last year? Not, not as probably valuable as you would think, because you know, for them, we got a new staff, and then for they have a new defensive coordinator. They're doing new things and 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 all that. I mean, we watched the film, and uh, I thought our guys it was maybe just judging on a little bit. I've, I haven't watched all of our games from last year because it's all new stuff now. But that was probably one of the best games we played last year. And we got up 14-0 with two big turnovers and then came back with a game-winning drive with five minutes to go in the game. So it was it was a, a really good performance. And our, and our guys played really well, we thought, against them last year. Now, how much relevance that has this year, I, I, don't, I don't know if it has any at all. But at the same time, you know, and then, you know, whether it's true or not, uh, I'm pretty good source was true that they had a couple staff members at our spring game, which is kind of like uh, that's not really supposed to happen. But um, no, we're 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 making plans accordingly, you know. If they, so if they if they're over there thinking they have our plays or what have you or signals or something like that, we've changed things since the spring. So. Oh, it's probably happened, um, but I, I don't. Uh, you know, we're not, uh, like we said, we, we're aware of it. And uh, then we caught somebody trying to film something the other day. And uh, first, my daughter called, Raquel saw him. And then I, then we caught him again, saw him, you know, peering through there with his camera. And I sent the biggest guy in our program, his crew, one of our assistant strength coaches. She's about like 6'7", 350, probably benches like uh, 1,000 pounds or something. Sent him up to bleachers to run him out. and. Uh, that guy disappeared pretty quick. So we'll see. That's funny. Coach, I'm just anxious for this team up this past week. Um, you have two prominent coaches here in this area, Hartford and Saban. One said that mentality is the number one thing, and the other said decision tally. I'm interested for you, what comes first? Is it the mental game or is it the physical? That would be both. Like, is that, that kind of the right political answer? I think, you know, there's, a, there's certainly, I think to get 
the physicality part. You got to have the mental part, right? You know, because football is a hard game. As as I told our guys, the things you got to do to be good in football aren't things that you do the rest of your life, and aren't and a lot of them aren't enjoyable. I mean, whether it's workouts and lifting weights and or hitting people with your pads and you know, uh, you know, blocking off. I mean, offensive line, just stuff the offensive linemen do, for instance. You know, when their career is done football-wise, they'll never do that stuff the rest of their life. You know, so it's a different sport, and you only want to have, you know, that's why we keep preaching hard edge, and that's hard edge and earned success are probably our two things that I don't – I'm not a big slogan guy to have all kinds of stuff all over, but the two things we talk to our guys about, having a hard edge, which is doing the hard stuff, and embracing that, and then earning success, not expecting it, but earning it. And those are the, probably the two things that we talk the most to about our players. Coach, the two guys that we're bringing in after you, Trey Charles and Zach Angelosi, can you talk about them and the senior class that they represent? Yeah, we got 14 seniors, and I think, and I've told the team this a couple of times, that um, we owe it to those 14 men to give our very best effort, coaches and players, uh, so they have the greatest experience of their athletic careers you know we're not eligible for the playoffs but we can win a conference and again we get we get some exposure well, we want our 14 seniors to truly enjoy this and they've they've provided great leadership you know Tay and Zach on both sides of the ball and it's hard for them because some of them have had two or three different position coaches they got a new head coach they, you know we're in transition now they won't be here when the new facilities built and when we move in conference USA and so uh, I had them over in my house last week and then we talked about that say hey I appreciate their efforts and their leadership because we want to be a player-led program you know in a lot of ways and and those 14 guys whether they want to or not when you're a, a senior uh, you're a leader and we want great leadership, and so far we've gotten it. Now the games are the, and the season is the biggest test. But uh, I would be surprised if we don't get don't get great leadership. Uh, those two guys and our 14 seniors. Senior center Zach Cangelosi and senior linebacker Tay Tullis, Devontae Tullis on the roster. We call him Tay. But um, guys, if y'all will start with you, Zach, and then Tay, if y'all can just talk about how excited y'all are to get your senior season started this week. Yeah, I mean, and insanely excited. Uh, I know we played a lot of games over that COVID season, so it was a lot back to back. But it feels like we've been off for a long time, and ready to get out there and get after it. Um, I would say I'm excited as well. Um, going through the whole journey of our six years being here, the whole time being at JSU, the whole time, um, it's just surreal. And going through being the young guys on the team to now, in turn, being team leaders, team captains. I'm just excited to play with the guys. Questions for the players? Okay. Could you talk about the and what you like to work with the progress you've made since you served Yes, sir. Uh, obviously, I've been here the whole time, so I saw him as a, as a freshman, watched him come in. I mean, he got in the weight room. He got, just got to work. He, he's gotten bigger, stronger, faster. And then to have the opportunity to come out here and potentially play with us on Saturday, I think will be awesome for him. I mean, he's improved so much since when he first got here. I, I think he deserves it. Uh, I know. I know. Coach talked about he likes to just put his face in people and just get to work, but he's gotten a lot better with the scheme and the offense. Understanding where he's supposed to be, understanding what they'll do when he's in the boundary. The defensive end is a lot more. He can do a lot more. Understanding where the mic spots are, which double team he's working to, and he's gotten a lot better with his hands too. He doesn't stick his face in there quite as much anymore. On the field, absolutely. Off the field, great dude. I mean, he'll give you the shirt off his back. So. For both of you guys, uh, just the adjustment period. I know we kind of chatted with some of you um, on media day, but what has it been like under Rich Rod, and what have you guys picked up the most with the time that you were able to spend with him before this uh, game one? It's, it's definitely been an adjustment, absolutely. Um, but I think it's been a good adjustment. A lot of. A lot of accountability, not just from the coaches, but the players. I mean, everybody's pushing towards the same goal. I mean, we all we all just want to be the best team we can out there. And I think the, the biggest thing I picked up from is the, the idea of a hard edge. Just it doesn't matter how hard it is, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard whether you do it or not. So why don't you go out there and do your best? Um, for me, I feel like it's been a good adjustment for myself and for the team as well. Uh, like Zach said, one of the biggest things that I picked up from Coach Richrod was to have a hard edge. And I feel like that's really important to me because the game of football is like life. 
and things are going to come at you. Uh, you might have good days, bad days, but no matter how hard it gets, you'll be able to push through it. And for you guys, uh, having the spotlight be pretty bright this week, you know, week zero, how does that feel for you guys? And is there any added pressure as a player knowing that you guys are going to be on ESPN and know too in this area, you guys are the only team, you know, kind of representing it? I don't think there's any necessarily any extra pressure. I mean, I think every game we've played has been on TV somewhere. This one will just have some more people watching, hopefully. So I don't think it'll be, it'll be too much added pressure. No, I mean, myself as well. I don't think it'll be too much pressure. Um, like you said, we've had some games that we've played on TV, uh, a few in the past that were on ESPN. But I just feel like football is football. Just like you have your fans watching, you'll just have extra fans at home watching. But um, we're just ready to put on a show and show them how we have a hard edge. Um, myself, just leave everything out there. Like, leave no doubt. With everything I do, as long as I'm playing fast, um, buying to the, the scheme that Coach uh, Zach Alley has set for us, uh, we'll be fine. I'm just playing, playing hard, playing fast. Uh, for our group and for myself, I mean, we just want to go out. We want to play hard. We want to play fast. We want to be physical. So we want, we want teams that play us to know they just played us and understand that we're out there playing a little different. I don't think much of it. I mean, we're focused on us. We're focused on playing this game and then, you know, putting our best product out on the field. If they, they think that's what they need, then that's, that's them. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's kind of funny to me that they send the person up here, but I don't think too much of it. Um, whatever they need to do to try to get a hand up, they might need it because we're coming. What's up? Your head coach said, you know, he would be shocked if a couple of quarterbacks didn't see some playing time this week. For you, do you have to make any adjustments or, or think about anything differently when you have different guys lining up behind you? No, sir. Um, most of our scheme stays the same between the two quarterbacks. And I, I've played with Zion before. He was our starting quarterback during the spring. And I've been practicing with Aaron every day. So I mean, there's not a huge difference between them besides six or seven inches. They're, they're, Aaron's tall. So he can, I don't know, he can see over us a little better. But I think that's about it. How impressed are Yeah, I mean, it's impressive for sure. Um, he's had a little bit less time than the rest of us had because we were with them in the spring and everything. But he's a smart dude, and he loves football. So he's come in, and he's just tried to compete every day. For me, on the defensive side, um, it's, I, I really like Aaron. He's a guy that loves to compete. Um, actually, throughout fall camp, we had a little bet that I wouldn't intercept any of his passes, which I got me one. A few of them went through my hands. But no, he, he's a really good quarterback, um, and he, he loves to work hard. Um, no, nah, personally, to me, no matter who's in, they're both ones, like, in my eyes. So either one we roll with, we'll be fine. Um, it's a day at a time, a week at a time. Like, if you're climbing up a tall mountain, you don't want to look to the top of it because you feel like it's so, so long, so far to go. So I feel like we just put our head down and every week. We just looking to win, looking to dominate. So uh, at the end of the season, no matter, even though we don't, we can't have any um, postseason play, as long as we do our job this season, every week we'll be fine. You guys are kind of I love JSU's fans. I think we have some of the best fans in football. I mean, they show up every day, every game, I should say, and they come out and they, they represent the area really well. So I love it. I'm excited. For myself, uh, I'm, I'm really excited because 
it'll be playing in Montgomery. And I'm from Dothan, Alabama, so it's only two hours away. I'll get um, love from my JSU fans and my, my family, friends and family back home. So it'll be, it'll be really fun.